The coherence principle is the uh, fifth of the multimedia principles, and these last two uh, have some interesting trade-offs with goals of engaging students, but we're going to focus, as the book does, on questions around learning and whether they, whether uh, um, the issues at hand are helpful or not for learning. So uh, we want you to be able to describe the coherence principle and why it's effective for learning, recognize when the coherence principle has been violated and when it's been applied well. So uh, which is better for student learning? When extraneous entertaining material is included or when extraneous entertaining material is excluded? So by extraneous, uh, we mean uh, not relevant to the uh, instructional objective or the learning objective, or as this caption says, unrelated to the learning objective. So if our uh, learning objective is about the processes of lightning. Is it better to include uh, some ma entertaining material like this about when flying through updrafts and airplane ride can become bumpy? Metal airplanes conduct lightning very well, but they sustain little damage because the bolt passes right through. Uh, the goal is to learn the processes of lightning is including this uh, picture of an airplane being struck by lightning uh, um, helpful for learning or not. Similarly, here's a second example, is uh, including a description of the history of spreadsheets when the learning objective is how to use a spreadsheet. Is that worthwhile? So here's a, an example, did you know, and talks about how one of the inventors of the electric spreadsheet watched the uh, university professor create a table of calculation results on a blackboard uh, and how it was tedious to race and so forth and that led him uh, to create PhysiCalc. Um, so what are your thoughts? Which is better? Um, well the principle suggests that excluding those entertaining materials should be better. Uh, and why is that? Extraneous material competes for cognitive resources and working memory and diverts attention from the important material. Now it's worthwhile to reflect on whether there is benefit to the entertainment in the long run. Uh, for example, if that uh, keeps students working with uh, material for a longer amount of time, that might compensate for the losses that uh, the lack of coherence might produce. Um, but those kinds of studies are ones that still remain to be done. Uh, but again, we're focusing on how the learning occurs when you equate the time and you either have entertaining materials that turn out to be distracting or not. But the idea of coherence is more general. It's really about keeping learners' attention on what's most relevant for the learning objective. So here's a great example of a case where a simpler uh, image here, which this is of the heart and the four chambers, and there's a circulation uh, that goes to the body and one that goes to the uh, lungs to oxygenate oxygenate, <laughs> provide oxygen to the blood. And here's a diagram that's more photorealistic of the lung, which is better for learning. Uh, well, this study uh, showed that the simpler diagram was better. Uh, they performed better on post-test se uh, sessions with this diagram along with descriptive text than this diagram along with the same descriptive text. Re realism can uh, essentially distract learners, uh, overwhelm them, uh, have them processing some of the irrelevant details of the, for example, the curviness of all these uh, veins and arteries, whereas the simplicity of this one really goes to the four chamber notion uh, and the double loop notion. Uh, it, the similar results have been found in other areas like this. 
Uh, coherence also relevant to text. Too much text can uh, be a threat to coherence and reduce learning. Uh, so here's an example of uh, overly uh, detailed text on spreadsheet uh, concepts, where is here is a more efficient and to the point, uh, more relevant and lean text that produces better learning. So think about coherence, not just with respect to images, but also with respect to text. Here are some websites you can go to to uh, test your uh, uh, thoughts about coherence and see where violations might be. Uh, there is finally an important issue to think about, again, with, with respect to all these principles about whether the application of them can be informed by cognitive task analysis. Here, you're making a decision about what images or text are relevant to a learning objective. How can you judge relevance? It can be uh, sometimes a, a judgment call. Not a, everyone might agree. And here it helps both to uh, think more deeply theoretically and perhaps collect data. Theoretically, you can ask, does the image or text contribute to the processing needed to perform tasks? If you can make a good argument that the image or text is on path, that for example, seeing a lightning bolt hit an airplane is on path to understanding the processes of lightning, then you could say it's coherent. It's, it's, that seems like it's a hard argument to, to make. Uh, um, other cases, it might be more close and maybe arguably relevant. You can then test hypotheses generated theoretically um, for example, interviewing experts, do they engage in the processes illustrated or described when performing tasks? Remember the focus is on performance, right? That's where rubber meets the road in, in learning. Uh, do novices productively use the image or text in performing tasks? Or, or for example, in learning from instructional materials, perhaps the image is not directly re relevant in terms of essential processing to performing it, the task, but maybe the image might be relevant to generative processes that would help one learn the task. Uh, so uh, these kinds of theoretical and empirical efforts are going to help you appropriately apply this principle or not. So uh, uh, before Summarizing with the learning objectives, let's step back and take a quick look at some of these uh, uh, examples. Um, here, if we can jump to this one, um, this is an example of, of, of a lecture uh, on nutrition and energy flow. And, and we can uh, scroll ahead a little bit here and note that at this point, there is an image of the of the sun here. We don't need that. Where the question is, where does energy ultimately come from? Ultimately, we see that all energy comes from the sun, and this is an X-ray of the sun, and it's in red. And if you listen to this video, you hear a student ask, "Why is it red?" And I, I thought black X-rays were black and white. So uh, you get a sense of extraneous processing in the classroom. Um, if you listen to this uh, lecture, it does have entertaining elements to it, but the, the question is, do those facilitate learning or not? So you can take a look at a couple of the other, the, uh, other examples there. See if you can um, uh, recognize cases where the co coherence principle might be violated, where there isn't uh, a coherent reason for content being present in cases where there might be an image in text that is relevant and therefore coherent. Um, uh, you should be able to more generally describe what the coherence principle is and why it's effective. 